My country's national shame, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, which I get to pay for with my taxes, doesn't even try to hide its agenda anymore. For those of you that aren't aware, it's the Canadian version of the BBC, but perhaps worse. It may be the most anti-straight white male network on the planet. I guess this makes sense, as Canada is probably the most regressive, or sorry, progressive, country on the planet now. So, today we're going to take a look at an article that is representative of what this network covers all day, every day. The article is entitled, A Huge, Huge Impact on Other Women, From Doctor Who to NBA Live, Pop Culture Gender Trends Are Shifting, written by National Trends columnist Jason Osler. A gender equity consultant says the new female-led series and movies are especially important for young women and girls. Well, who cares about men and boys? This is the CBC, after all. So, who is this gender equity consultant? Well, here is Dr. Christina Stasia. Here's her profile at the University of Alberta. Nope, no gender bias here at all. Now, before going ahead, let's clarify what gender equity is. And it's definitely not equality. Equality means equal opportunity, which means everyone is given an equal chance to succeed, regardless of gender. Equity means equality of outcome. It means that people get jobs, grants, and so forth based on their gender or other demographic status. It means that you haven't earned your place in the world. It was handed to you based on what you were born with. Seems kind of discriminatory to me. Anyway, let's go back to the article. Osler writes that it's mostly a man's world in video games and action movies and TV shows. Well then, Osler, why didn't you let a woman write this article? I guess you're one of those guys who thinks everyone else should make sacrifices for the BS you preach. But you're immune because you're woke or something. Also, might there be genetic, biological, or hereditary reasons why men on average tend to be more interested in video games and action movies? Wait, what am I saying? These are facts, and the CBC hates facts. We start by learning that NBA Live 19 allows games to create female characters. Announcer Megan McPeak says, quote, It might entice girls to maybe want to play with their brothers and be included in something that they might not have been included in before. Question. What exactly was keeping women from playing with their brothers before? Nothing. Wow, this is a weak argument. She continues, It might show a different level of respect that some young men have for the women's game that don't necessarily have it now or don't have the chance to see it. Well, no. Perhaps they just don't find the women's game that interesting. It's still a free world, McPeak. Well, at least for now. She continues, I think it's great, and I think if it happened earlier, I don't think it would have had the same impact that it does right now. Well, no, because just a few years ago, this wouldn't have looked like agenda pushing, now would it? Osler then briefly talks about the 13th Doctor, which I've covered once or twice on this channel. He doesn't really say much about this. Simply that it happened is good enough for the CBC. Let's just ignore the backstory of Doctor Who being taken over by feminist and SJW propaganda after 2015, although the CBC would love this, I'm sure, or about only women being considered for the role, equity y'all, splitting and destroying the fan base, completely ignoring concerns from half the fan base, and generally not caring about the future and success of this 55-year-old franchise. Nope. All the CBC cares about is that it happened. Then he mentions Ant-Man and the Wasp, which I actually really enjoyed. What I like about the MCU is that it doesn't let politics and ideology dictate its course. One of the many reasons why it's been so successful. Yes, ideology is in there, but it doesn't override everything else. But of course, the discussion here is not about the merits of the film, only the fact that Evangeline Lilly was co-lead. Lilly said it's about time. Can't you just accept that it was a good movie? Why does gender need to be brought into everything? Osler then mentions Wonder Woman, which was another good movie and the only DC movie to date that isn't a complete disaster. Osler then shows his lack of research skills when he states that, quote, Wonder Woman was the first female superhero to get her own movie. Really? What about Catwoman or Elektra? Yes, these movies were beyond horrible, but you just can't pretend they don't exist. Back to Christina Stasia. You know, the one who I'm sure is helping train many future engineers and scientists. Apparently, she uses random YouTube videos as her evidence that supposedly indicates this decision was universally accepted. Sorry, Stasia, but where's your academic evidence? This is emotional blackmail more than anything. Of course, instilling young girls with confidence is a good thing, but this isn't the full story. What about the young boys that are repeatedly told that they're scum? Stasia refers to a world opening up for young girls in the video. 
Really, Stasia, explain how the world wasn't open to them before. She then links this to the Me Too movement. While it does highlight some serious issues, at least it did in the beginning, I think the movement really got out of hand, and in some cases, men were being accused if they even looked at a woman the wrong way. We then go back to gender equality. Yes, Stasia, I believe in equality, not equity. But if we had equality, then you wouldn't have a job, now would you? In Western society, and especially in Canada, we have to give people things regardless of whether or not they earn them. Here's her flawed logic. Quote, we need to make sure that we're buying tickets for films, buying these games, playing these games, so that it becomes lucrative. The only way they're going to keep doing this is if it makes them money. Well, Stasia, here's where your flawed logic butts heads with the private market. People, both men and women, still have the ability to spend their untaxed money in the way they want. If a movie sucks, like, say, Ghostbusters, then they're not going to go see it. If they don't want to buy comic books with forced diversity and ideology, then they don't have to. If they want to disown a franchise because of its ideological BS, that's their right. SJW feminist nutjobs only make up a small minority of society at large, and sorry, but your numbers are not big enough to make anything successful on the grander scale. She says she's had enough of talking about firsts that should have happened a long time ago. So what you're saying is that there hasn't been any female leads in science fiction before, and there hasn't been any prominent female athletes before. Wow, for a supposed academic, your research skills sure seem to be lacking. She says... I don't want to keep getting excited every time there's a new female action hero because women play basketball, women play hockey, women can save the day. Let's start seeing that on the screen, on our video screen, on our television screen, on our film screens. Let's focus on making quality product. The real world isn't like the academic world. People don't want to pay for crap, regardless of what demographics it represents. Wonder Woman and Ant-Man and the Wasp were both good movies and people paid to see them. Catwoman and Ghostbusters were both terrible movies, and they didn't make a lot of money, now did they? When it comes to what people are being subjected to now, well, I think it's clear that people don't want to be force-fed ideological crap, but Hollywood seems to be clueless on this. Maybe we'll need a few more bombs before they realize this isn't working. Osler finishes by referencing a study from the University of Southern California that looked at the top 100 Hollywood films where they found that only 31% of characters with speaking roles were women. Well, let me explain this again, Osler. This is the private market. These are the most profitable movies and movies that people, both men and women, decided they wanted to see. People are allowed to see what they want to see. If you want this changed, then it's pretty simple. Make movies that people want to see rather than forcing ideology and diversity down our throats. And that is all. So, as always everyone, thank you for watching, and have a great day.